That morning, the teacher explained to us that we were going to take the morning to prepare in the event of a nuclear attack by the Russians. The first thing we had to do was to pull all the blinds, and then we were to hide under our desks, putting our hands over our heads and crouching. If we had time, we would go to the basement of the school. Most of us didn't even know there was a basement in the school. At that, she had us all stand and we orderly made our way to the hallway where we joined the rest of the student body to make our way to the basement. Now, the problem was the basement really wasn't big enough for all of us to assemble there. And so most of us got left on the staircase. We wondered even then, what would happen to those on the staircase? It wasn't until later as I increased my studies in warfare and discovered what nuclear attack really would be like that I realized none of our preparedness would really have saved us at all. What was so little in the face of so much power? I wonder if that's how the Ephesians greeted Paul's words about putting on the armor of Christ. I mean, let's get real. What is that armor up against the political and military and economic and social might of the Roman Empire? I mean, they occupied the country. Who were they? And what was so little against so much going to do? It's an interesting passage, and it's been one of my favorites since I was a little boy. In fact, it hooked me in this whole religion thing to put on the armor of God. I had always been fascinated by knights and castles and dragons. This just fit with my fantasies. It's surprising, however, that over the years, I've managed to miss one critical verse in that whole passage. I got the helmet, the, be the belt, the sword, the shield, the breastplate, all that stuff. But what was I going to wear on my feet? One would assume that with all that other preparation, I'd have some good military-type boots. But that's not what it says. It says we're to put on whatever footwear that will enable us to move quickly, adeptly, nimbly that we may proclaim the gospel of peace. Wow. The armor of God is not offensive, it's defensive. It's to protect us as we go about doing our work. Because to be one who proclaims a gospel of peace, of wholeness, of reconciliation. It's not an easy task. And yet it is our call. As those who believe that we have already been reconciled in God, what else is there for us to do but to reconcile with one another? But I learned the hard way. This is not easy. Early on in the political mores that we find ourselves in these days, I truly tried to take the middle road. And I soon found myself attacked by my conservative friends as being far too liberal and as my liberal friends as being far too conservative. 
and they waged great warfare upon me to pull me into their positions. In the end, I went with my heart, and it cost me dearly. The minute I moved off center, I lost friends, I lost parishioners. That's a high cost. And it's unnecessary because it's not what we are called to be. In the midst of the craziness of this world, that seems hell-bent on dividing us, that has produced millions upon millions of now political, military, economic, theological experts who are more than willing to voice their opinions and to convince you that you are wrong. we are called to proclaim a different message. To a world that I believe really doesn't want to believe that God exists, or that at least doesn't get messed up in our stuff. Just leave us alone, God. We are called to proclaim a God that is imminent, and intimate, a God who in Christ has indeed saved us and reconciles not only us but all to God's self through Christ. And to work not only to proclaim that word but to work for peace and reconciliation among our brothers and sisters. It is not hard to understand why Paul tells us to get armed up. But as we're doing, let's not forget our Nikes and just do it. For in the end, it will not be politics it will not be economics, it will not be education, it will not be social standing or success, it will not even be religion that will save us, but God alone. So let us go do what we have been called to do and do it fast, for time is running out. Strap on those Nikes and get to work. It's time for peace. Let us talents and tongues employ, preaching out with a shout of joy. Bread is broken and wine is poured. Christ has spoken and seen and heard. Jesus lives again, earth shall breathe again, pass the word around, loaves abound. Christ is able to make us one, at the table he sets the tone, teaching people to live to bless, love and word and in deed express. Jesus lives again, earth shall breathe again, Pass the word around, loaves abound. Jesus calls us in, sends us out, bearing fruit in a world of doubt, gives us love to tell, bread to share. Jesus, God, Emmanuel, everywhere. Jesus lives again, earth shall breathe again. Pass the word around, loaves abound.